Hello, hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone are doing great. I'm also doing good. So today I came up with one of the most requested, most interesting topic, which is nothing but Spark UI. Say goodbye to sluggish Spark UI experiences, learn how to identify and eliminate performance bottlenecks, leading to faster data processing and more efficient workflows. Today I'll show you the practical techniques and tools that will boost your Spark application speed significantly. Without further delay, let's get into the video. Guys, 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 once again. So before we jump into the video, I have a few challenges to you. So this is the first question. And I have highlighted some of the timelines here. Can you just observe this screenshot and can you let me know what you have observed? So if you find something, please add it into the comment section below fast so that we can quickly move to the other question. This is the second challenge. So this is the screenshot of Spark UI and there is some flaw in it. So can you please find out quickly and add it into the comment section below fast we can jump into the another challenge question this is the third challenge you see this is the spark ui DAG, and where we'll see some of the metrics that you have listed out here have you found anything odd or mistake in this please add it into the comment section below at fast everyone added the comment right let's get into the video now first of all we need to understand what is a spark ui so spark ui is an essential tool for understanding spark job behavior and it will help to visualize the Spark cluster state and resource utilization. Dive into the details to identify the potential bottleneck. In single word, it can tell you all the details complete. It will tell you all complete details about your Spark job. It can help you to unmask the bottlenecks like slow task execution, data queue problems, and shuffle issues, GC issues, memory related issues, etc. Now, in this video, I'm going to take some Spark code and I'm going to execute and I can explain you the Spark UI, how, what are all the details that we have, right? So this is the piece of code that I have taken and can execute. So this is just like a simple code where we have an employee data frame and department data frame and I'm trying to join, right? So let's execute this and we'll see the Spark UI. Yes, I have executed this and this is how the jobs tab looks like. You see, you can see the information about the executors got added and the task that it has executed. So currently it has executed the two jobs with three tasks. So jobs can give you the complete information about when it was submitted, duration, the stages, tasks, succeeded, and the total. Hey guys, just quick reminder. I put a lot of effort into creating these videos to bring you clear, helpful content. If you learned even one new thing today, please hit like button and drop a comment. It really keeps me motivated to make more videos like this thanks for your support so actually what should we look for something like long running job we need to start looking into it if you see the screenshot here so you can see the you can see the duration of each particular task how much time it is taken so this particular task has taken 5.3 minutes so that means this is the task job it is taking long time so we need to debug it and next we need to see the event timelines so even timelines can actually tell you when executors got added and when executors got removed and what it has done in between. Are there any failures or executors got killed? So those information you can find it from the event timeline. And next we need to see the failures or the retries. It will actually give the sign of task failures or re-executions. You see in the screenshot 699 tasks has completely failed and none of the tasks has succeeded. So that means something wrong with that particular job. So we need to take a look and we need to fix that one in order to run it so the answer for this screenshot is if you clear if you closely observe the task time will be almost same but if you see the task timing after 437 the next task has started at 617 that means it is waiting for two hours so what it has done for two hours it is actually preparing the broadcast exchange so to do the broadcast join it has done some preparation on the driver side so that has taken the two hours so if your answer was correct then please give a like Next, we can see about the stages tab. So what it shows is detailed or stage breakdowns like DAG, task timings, shuffle metrics, operations like scan, shuffle, aggregate, and much more details. And also you can see more details about the DAG visualization. And also we can enable these additional metrics to see the additional metrics. And you can enable the time, event timeline to see the events. And also we can see the metrics about all tasks and metrics about the executors and metrics about all tasks like where it is executed what is the index what is the host name and what is the duration what is the gc time so a lot more details that you can find it in the stage so this is actually one of my famous tab so let me show you what we have to look into this actually 
right so we have to see the DAG view that can give you the information about scans shuffle aggregate and when you open the event timeline you can able to find out the spot slow or staggered task like you see in the screenshot some of the tasks are smaller and four tasks are larger so that means it has some data skew very small data skew and also we can check the different skews so to identify the skew how to fix it and all the details i can give you the how to handle the skewed partition in the icon icon you can check it from there and also you can see the shuffle read rate sizes that indicates high over bottleneck and gc time like more gc time that is also an issue and how many retries that will hit the frequent failures and also leads to instability if you see the screenshot a lot of data will be returned to a lot of data will be shuffled input size and the shuffle so that means it is suffering with lot of input output operations and you see it is spilled the data to memory on the disk so that's where it has a spilling issues and if you can see the metrics summary metrics it is also suffering with the data skew problem and if you see highlighted on the task section like the gc time and the actual duration and the spill details so these are all the things that we have to look into next is storage tab you see the purpose of the storage tab is to track the persistent rdds data frames or rdds in memory or disk and you see this is the rdd that it has used and the storage level you can see memory is a decent list and cached partitions are three and hundred percent you know fraction cached is hundred percent and size in the memory is bytes size in the disk is zero if you can expand this you can also see more details about each partition like it has three partition three partition details that you can see it out here and also you can find the executors and more details like on heap memory off heap memory and disk usage so to know more about the off heap memory when to use and how we solve the memory issues by using the off heap memory I have, I have already explained in the half week memory, I can give you the end card button, you can go and check it, like how we can mitigate this issue. So what we can look for actually in this is, we need to see what is the storage level that is using and how many partitions are cached and what is the total partitions and what is the size in memory and how much memory it is currently allocated for the storage and how it is, how much it is left for the processing. So if you assign more memory for the storage, it will left with only few size for the processing that's where you will see a lot of issues so even if you see the screenshot a lot of data will be cached out so it left with no memory for the processing that's where we are seeing the out of memory issue right so you will see the details from the solution so you need to find out these kind of details from the storage tab the answer for this screenshot is if you clearly observe this one this particular task has completed at 1523 and for 16.5 almost for 10 minutes no task has succeeded and you see it is zero tasks and total task will be a lot more task so that means it has some small file problem so we need to fix that small file problem if your answer was correct so please give a like or please mention in the comment section next we see about executor tabs so inside the executor tabs we have a summary details about all executors like storage memory disk used course active task failed task complete task total task and the task time gc time and how much data that each executor has processed what is the shuffle read and what is the shuffle write so it can give you all the summary information all summarized information and also you can select the additional metrics so that you can able to see the metrics that is related to peak usage memory and the off memory so if you wanted to know more about the half memory i already made a video on it i can keep it for an end card you can go and check so that you'll get more details about the half memory and mostly we can check like memory usage gc time and shuffle data if you see this screenshot so mostly this particular spark job id is suffering with more taking more time on gc means gc issue that it is it is suffering with the gc issue and due to that it has many tasks are taking long time are in waiting queue to process the data so we need to identify this kind of a pattern along with that we need to find out data skew problems where some executor handling much more workload compared to others and also we can find out the gc heavy executors you need to tune the memory or gc settings and also we need to check the spilled shuffles like increase the shuffle memory or increase the partitions failed executors so we need to check the standard error and standard out for any out of memory error or disk issues so next tab will be sql or data frame tab so here in this tab each query will be categorized under the queries and it can show you the completed query and the failed query if there are any so if you see this particular query it will give you the submitted time and the duration that it has executed and number of job id that it will take in so once you can click on this query it will show you the 
visualization so in the visualization we can get the complete details about the particular uh, job like you see uh, the total time that it take and minimum medium case and the stages and also it can show you the stage and the task id and also it will tell you the, uh, it will show you the time it has taken build it has taken collected and what is the number of rows and all that information that it will show and also it will show you the many other details on the exchange you see the exchange and whole change and all those details exchange and hash aggregate and adaptive query execution plan are used or not all those things we can find along with that we can also see the explain plan that is physical plan that you can that you can verify it out here in the sql aq tab if you enable the aq then it will try to reduce the number of partitions into one like if you find the smaller partition you see smaller partitions are 200 in the screenshot and it will be converted to one partition right that will be taken care by the aq we don't need to do anything on it and even if you see in this screenshot it is has identified one skew partition so it will automatically convert the skew partition into eight smaller partitions so that's how the aq can be helpful for uh, to to new job and also you can see that you can see the visually the tag that it has the very complex tag so when you find such a complex tag your spark driver might have get hang or you can see a lot of delays of executing this one so the best recommendation is we try to split the tags into the multiple jobs and we can schedule the multiple job that's how we can mitigate this issue right so we can also check details like exchange and expansive operations whole stage code generation missing broadcast joins or lineage and the checkpointing the answer for this screenshot is if you see when you are reading the scan parquet so reading it was around 40.9 gb but when it is exchanged the same data set will be as like 1676 gb that means 1.5 tb right so why it was expanded because this is more compressed data and when you load the data compressed data into the spark it will be exploded so the expanded data will be 1.5 tb that's where we'll get out of memory errors so whoever answered this correctly so please add it in the comment section to know to see how many people can give you the correct answer for this so finally the conclusion is beyond the ui a proactive approach to spark optimization continuously monitor the spark ui for performance trends and identify the potential bottleneck before they impact efficiency develop a system for analyzing and addressing performance issues adopt best practices for writing efficient spark code and leverage the power of spark ui to achieve the optimal performance so finally use the spark ht server for post job analysis we can combine the ui plus logs like std out std error per task and the executor to pinpoint the issue so watch for data skew shuffle spices and gc hotspot these are the big performance bottlenecks if you like the video please give a like add a comment or give any feedback about the video please do subscribe for data architect studio for more such interesting videos we'll meet with the next video thank you